What is going on guys? Today we are fishing and we are crawfishing. Check out what I just found. So I've been walking around looking for new fishing spots and I came underneath this bridge and there's uh, there are all these rocks. Something is dammed up this little stream right in here and I have to imagine there are crawfish all over. And then over here, just look at this. This just looks fantastic for fishing. Uh, kind of swift right through this part, but down there, you know there's gonna be some riffles. In fact, let's go look down there. Yeah, check it out. You see where all these like riffles are and stuff right here. This, there's like islands, <clears throat> there are islands right in the middle of the river. This just looks like an amazing fishing area. Never been to this spot. So it is October and it got down to like 40 degrees last night. And what's gonna start happening is the, the crawfish are gonna start going into hibernation and they're gonna start burrowing down, burrowing down in the mud and stuff and they just, they just go away until next summer. And so what I wanna do today is come out and try to catch a few more crawdads and, um, and then also use crawdads as trout bait as I did in a previous video. And so catch some trout, catch some crawfish and then cook them all up later for a little afternoon lunch, dinner. Let's get fishing. Nice little mess of crawdads right there. A lot of smaller ones in this little pool. So that's pretty good. It's pretty good to catch that many in, in this small of an area. Boy, some of these crawdads though need to join some sort of crawfish football league because they're juking the socks off of me. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use one of these crawdads as bait. Now last time, if you watched one of my videos, I actually took the crawdads and I, um, and I cut the tail off of them and then I took the soft tail meat out and I just used that as bait. But I caught quite a few smaller ones. I mean look how tiny that guy is. I think I'm gonna put this this whole crawdad on a hook. Just live. Just barely hook it through his tail and let's see if any let's see if any um, trout go for that. I have to imagine a big trout, a big enough trout would, would see the uh, see a little live crawfish and, and take it up easily. So what I have here is just <clears throat> a simple little bait holder hook, very, very small, on six pound test line. I'm just gonna take this little crawdad, barely hooking through the tail. He might get off, we'll see. But just like that, little crawfish on a hook. Let's see, I have a little split shot as well, and let's see if that gets a big trout. All right, instead of, I was gonna wade way out there, but I'm gonna try right along this little ridge right in here. This actually looks pretty good. Oh, I'm getting a bite, getting a bite. I just had something, boink. Something hit it real hard. 
I'm just gonna walk down. Um, walk to the other side. I saw some fish flicking on the surface. What the? Crawdad's gone right there. But I didn't even feel like there was just slack in my line. And also when I reeled it up, the craw was gone. So something got him. Now let me go back and get another one. Here's a big crawdad. Got him. Oh, he's a one claw fellow. So since I can't find another tiny crawdad, I'm just gonna use this one um, as bait. Take the tail off. So there we go. We got a nice little chunk of crawdad tail meat. Let's get whatever fish is down here. Got one. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice little trout. Woo! Very nice. Beautiful trout. Right there. Not a monster, but a gorgeous fish. Swallowed the hook. Okay, this is crazy. I have caught now four trout exactly on chunks of crawdad and all four of them have swallowed it. I mean, they just go over it without any hesitation. I'm gonna have to figure out some different game plan like getting some circle hooks or something because they all keep swallowing it, swallowing the hook. I'm gonna keep this guy. Um, there's no size limit around here, by the way, at least in this particular area. There are sections of the river where there's a size limit, but not right here. So I can keep this one legally. Well, looky here. Somebody's done that same thing again. See the, that line of rocks? People do that, they're trying to dam it up. Probably when the water was lower, they're trying to dam it up. And uh, so I'm just gonna go through and flip over all those rocks, see if there's crawfish under it. Guys, I was just walking back and I just saw this massive, massive crawdad. This is this is the biggest one of the day. Dude! What? Look at that! That is a beast! That is a beast! That is one of the biggest crawdads I've caught this year. That is crazy. <laughs> Well guys, a little bit slow on the fishing out here. I had several trout get away, so that's why it's slow, is because I've lost, I lost a couple. But uh, the crawfishing's good. And so I have a nice mess of crawfish now. And so let's just, what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually really hungry. It's like three o'clock in the afternoon, and I didn't have lunch, so I'm really hungry. So we're gonna find a little spot here, and we're gonna cook up some crawdads and trout. All right, I'm gonna push a couple logs together here and try to make kind of a little, table so there aren't that many big rocks. All right, so let's prepare this trout here. All I'm gonna do is cut off the head. I'm going to cut up the body. This is just a simple gut for those of you who are new to fishing. And then you pull out the guts like this. And I throw this out into the river for all the crawdads. <laughs> it's all the circle of life. And then you see that red blood line. It's a blood line right in there. And the easiest way to get that out is you just take your thumb and you just push it out. See how it almost all comes out in one, one thing? It's just, just one push with your thumb and it all comes out. Check out our mess of crawdads there. Look at that. That is some good, look how big this dude is. With the one claw, 
And then this guy has the biggest claws of them all, big meaty claws. This is gonna be some good eating right here. And then what I'm gonna do guys is this is this is my little camp setup. And I still have the fish head here. And there are a lot of mink along this river. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna set the fish head right there. And then we'll watch and we'll see if a mink comes out of the woods to grab it. For those of you who are new to my channel, this is my catch and cook or my portable catch and cook setup right here when I'm not building a fire. This is a little propane tank and there's the cord which leads to uh, that stove in there, the little stove top. And then right here we have the little wind guard because it's a little bit breezy out here. And then the pot. We're gonna add some water to this. And for our lineup of spices for these crawfish, we have Zatarain's shrimp and crab boil, sea salt, New Orleans Cajun seasoning, and a lemon. And by the way, Ridge Wallet also makes Ridge knives, as well as phone cases and some other cool things. Anyway, so that's how we're gonna season the crawdads. This is we have some boiling starting. I'm gonna add the Zatarain's crab boil. Add quite a bit just to make the crawfish a little bit spicy. Sea salt. I always add tons of sea salt to mine because otherwise it seems like the flavor of the crustaceans leaches out if you don't put enough salt in. Cajun. And make a hole in the lemon. And just squeeze a bunch of juice. See how the brew boils? It is ready for crawdads. All right, all right. We're gonna add the biggest one first because this guy's gonna take the longest. Look at that beast! That is one of the biggest crawdads I've caught all year in terms of the claws. All right, we're gonna add it first. He's gonna take the longest. We got one, two. Oh man, that guy's, that guy's a nice size too. Three. This last one just doesn't want to cut. He's just hanging on for dear life. This is the 15th crawdad. Come on. Uh oh. He is just determined. There. All right, we got a little boil over here. Everything must be cooking good. Oh yes. Look at that. So I forgot to mention this. What I'm gonna do with these crawdads, I'm gonna do something, I, I've never done this before. Uh, this year so far, I've made a trout sandwich, or multiple trout sandwiches, and a frog sandwich. And so today, I'm gonna make my very first crawdad sandwich. It's all boiling over here. Let's check what we got. Oh, that looks good. That looks amazing. And these craws are just about done. One of the reasons why I don't time it, I just kind of look at them, is because uh, you can tell when a crawdad is done, the uh, carapace and the tail start coming away from each other. You can see that white part right there. So when you start seeing white parts on all the crawdads, you know they're just about done. So we take these off the burner. Oh man, that was... I love the smell of Zatarain's crab boil. If you guys use it, you know what I'm talking about. It's just, it, I don't, it just, it's just a great smell. It just reminds me of like seafood and just every kind of goodness. While the crawdads are soaking, we're gonna add this frying pan. Oops. Like so. We're going to add a little butter to the pan. Once the butter is melted, we're gonna add a piece of bread. And the other part, oh, they don't quite fit other part of the bread in there. Swirl those around and let those cook a little bit. Oh, that looks beautiful and buttery. Oops, nice, <laughs> took that off just in time. Now I've turned off the stove and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of these crawdads and I'm going to peel them, get the meat out, Well, Houston, we have a problem. 
I just peeled all the crawfish, and this is how much meat we have. So, I, you know, I'm just looking at this, and I'm going, that, you know, it, it might fit on there. Uh, I don't know if it's going to cover the sandwich, uh, but it's not enough, enough meat for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook up my small trout. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook up the trout, and while it's frying, and all the butter, I'm going to put the crawdad pieces all around the trout and kind of fry it all up together, and then put it all in the sandwich. Salt trout. Cajun trout. Then around the trout, I will add the crawdads. Throw a little Cajun over the crawdad tails and claws as well. And call it good. Oh man, look how beautiful that is, guys. This is gonna be delicious. For the sandwich, I shall add a little mayo ring to the outside so that the crawdad pieces don't fall off. We'll add our crawfish. The last couple tails there. Oh man. See, but it doesn't quite cover the whole sandwich. So we'll add the trout. There we go. So we got like half crawdad, half trout. Then we shall add to it a little bit of lettuce. Like so. Pickles. Oh man, my mouth is watering. And mayonnaise. Oh, I just realized something. I did the same thing I always do. Oops. I put the other... <laughs> that's like the third time this year. I put the other piece of bread underneath. Ah. Oh man, this is going to be a one big delicious sandwich here. Check that action out. And it only took me 45 minutes to make. This better be worth it. Let's say a quick prayer over this sandwich. Oh boy. I almost dropped it. Not even kidding you. Almost dropped it. Ooh, it's getting chilly out here. This is probably the last time I'll crawfish this year, unfortunately. I have to wait till June. Unless I go down south, southern United States. All the crawdad meat spilling out that side. It was worth it. No, but seriously. This is way more work than I thought. I knew it was going to be a little bit more work because I had to peel the crawdads and stuff. But I didn't know 15 crawdads only made that much meat. Mmm. Guys. The spiciness of the crawdads, the toasted bread, and then the fresh lettuce and mayo. It's amazing. I feel like I should be on Food Network. Mmm. It's over. It's done. Guys, I'm going to start selling these online. Crawdad sandwiches. I'll put links to these in the description. Check them out below. Thank you for hanging out today, and I'll see you in the next one.